Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Samarian, not a real doctor, and today we need to talk about, well, um, people's problems with understanding the fluidity of canon in general fiction. Oh no, we may be moving slightly off topic from the SCP wiki, which is my area of, I don't know if expertise is the right thing to say, but you know, that's the stuff I create. Part of what has inspired this is when the SCP wiki uh, found out like publicly, I think it was uh, April 27th, 2024, that the versus battle wiki, am I getting that right? Yeah, the versus battle.com message boards, actually. St it's a staff discussion board uh, for a wiki that I'd never heard of before. They had a big post about how they felt they were being influenced by SCP writers and authors in a negative way because the SCP wiki clearly knew about them and were creating entries deliberately to mess with their system. I'm paraphrasing probably poorly, but that is the message that the SCP Wiki's authors sort of picked up from this post uh, when they read it. And the idea was that they're going to ban SCP entries from this uh, particular uh, power scaling website, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, <laughs> power scaling as, involving SCPs is, ex we talked about this like literally almost two, three videos ago, which was a very long time ago in real time, but that's neither here nor there. But power scaling with regards to SCPs is, uh, it's been going on for a really long time. And it needs certain qualifications in order to even work because there is no single version of SCP 682. If you're going to say 682, you'd need to say, like, create a list, a cluster of articles that involve 682 and say, this cluster of articles of this version of 682 is the version that we're pitting up against. Superman or whoever you want to put him up against. Um, I don't like the idea. No, that's not true. That's actually straight up false. If I were to say I don't like uh, power scaling or versus stuff, I don't think of the stuff that I'd create that way because it's a little bit like when someone uses the term OC to describe an original character, even though original characters are almost all characters in fiction, except for when someone's creating fan fiction, right? Dr. Jeremiah Samarian is an original character, but so is uh, Tom Sawyer. So is Romeo or Juliet. Those are all original characters. So if you use OC, it sounds less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? OC, original character, when we talk about something like, uh, you know, classic fiction with, you know, books, that kind of stuff. Uh, has a, you know, a better reputation than if you're talking about creating, say, Star Trek fan fiction with an original character. Those are two different things. Um, and a little bit like that is power scaling. I've created all sorts of versus battle content on my channel here, on the SCP wiki itself, and I don't think of it as power scaling, but it almost certainly would fall into that level of like definition. So it would be very dishonest of me to say that it doesn't interest me. It doesn't interest me a lot. I do it more for the fact that I know there's an audience for it, but it does hold, I wouldn't do it at all if it didn't hold some interest for me. Every once in a while, I'm thinking, I, every once in a while, I'm like anybody, my brain starts going, huh, but could SCP-2343 beat 343? And yeah, I wrote SCP-2343 as sort of a uh, anti, no, not an anti, like a spiritual rewrite of 343, because I don't like the article, but I like the concept. But uh, yeah, in the back of my mind, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could beat, I wonder if the thing I wrote could beat that other thing that I wrote it in response to. And that, that kind of stuff comes into every, I think that comes into every author's heads, but we don't think of it as power scaling arguments because we don't get that in depth on it. And the reason why power scaling has gotten its bad reputation on the SCP wiki is, one, there is no canon. Well, there are infinite canons also. <laughs> there is no canon and there are infinite canons. The old version of that argument is there is no canon, right? But really, there are infinite canons. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you, each individual article 
And every new article that's created creates its own canonical world behind it. Now, it can reference other articles, and it, those articles can be integrated into its canon, but that doesn't mean that it is canon to those other articles. It just means that this one that you've newly created ref, it considered, so, you know, I'm going to I'll keep I'm going to keep using SCP-682 because it's a really good one for a power scaling sort of uh, discussion. If I create an article that mentions 682, then 682 is canonical to the thing I just created. But just because that's true doesn't mean that the article 682 then has to respect this new thing I've created. That's how the SCP wiki works. And the fluidity of canons is a lot less sacrosanct than people give it credit for. Now, obviously, when we talk about things like Star Wars or Star Trek, the Klingons of, say, Star Trek are very different today than what they used to be. Used to be, they looked completely different, smooth foreheads, like very pronounced uh, eyebrows, and... Let's be honest, this was the 1960s, um, extremely offensive, stereotypical uh, East Asian tropes were used to describe them and to uh, sort of explain their behaviors. Uh, they were not uh, they were not delicately done um, and they weren't a reflection. They weren't like because Star Trek does a lot of this where they reflect on social problems like that and they say you know this is this is our take on it and this is how we're shining a light on it this wasn't shining a light on it this was just playing the stereotypes straight and then the 1980s came around people's sort of uh sensitivity to that sort of stuff was a little higher not much higher but a little higher and also they had a better budget so they completely redid the klingons both physically which is mo the most obvious part but also culturally like their whole deal changed and and dramatically so now star trek is the kind of thing that you would consider having a single through line canon but it absolutely doesn't from episode to episode uh, voyager was the the uh, star trek voyager was one of the worst series for this the, re the rest of the series did their best to try and keep a continuous thread of uh consistent lore between them uh they didn't always do a great job there were a lot of times where things contradicted and sometimes deliberately were contradicted because the uh, the writers of that particular episode just didn't feel like dealing with a problem but voyager was one of the worst for it because like the, even the characters didn't have, <laughs> didn't have consistent motivations across episodes but we still think of canon as like biblical right because that's the origin of the term canon by the way like the idea of a collection of books that together create a belief right uh the but but, but even the religious christian canon which is the one i'm probably most familiar with when it comes to religiosities and some such um even the christian canon <laughs> is full of contradictions i'm not going to go into detail but <laughs> Reading the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, you will find their depictions of Jesus are not exactly the same. And it's, of course, of course, it's from four different points of view, right? It's from four different perspectives. So, of course, they're not the same. But people treat it as though it is the word of God written by human hands uh, and infallible. So <laughs> there's some problems there because... Like there are, and there are legitimately like parts of the Bible that say, don't do this thing. And then other parts of the Bible that say, definitely do this thing. <laughs> and it just doesn't, it doesn't jive. It's because they were written by a bunch of different people over a long period of time. Um, and faith isn't about like, under, you know, faith isn't about un, like, ex, it, faith is about accepting the contradictions and saying, I still have faith anyway. Right. That's, that's what faith is. Um, so even in the original usage of the word of the word canon, things aren't consistent. And more recently, uh, the Star Wars canon was completely retooled by Disney because they decided that they were wanting to do away with the extremely bloated, and I mean extremely bloated, uh, history of Star Wars and sort of start fresh with just the stuff they wanted to use. And then like they could go into the back, the back end of the lore from time to time and pull out something and then make it canon again. Marvel 
DC comics, both comics and movies, by the way, the DC Marvel movies have done a pretty good job keeping their canons like very even and making sure that things from point A to point B, everything stays true and stays the same. They've made mistakes, too. But the comics, one of the like cornerstones of modern pop culture now, <laughs> which I, th I think is fair to say used to not be true, but it is currently is now, especially with the success of the Marvel movie franchise. Um, they are legitimately, literally fluid cannons. Like a thing that happens in one issue, like you remember a thing that happened and it, if you remember a thing that happened in comics 10 years ago, it's probably no longer canon. The only thing that's canon is the current version of the comic you're reading and whatever it references. <laughs> and sometimes it'll reference stuff in the very recent past and sometimes it'll re reference stuff that happened in the long past and it will say that it happened a different way than you remember reading it. Canon is not in any form of fiction. No television series. Game of Thrones had a, a shaky canon in a couple a couple of ways. I, again, I could go into specific examples. I think it would be better if you just like looked these up yourself and you could absolutely find them. Every TV series, long running TV series that has a canon has had inconsistencies in that canon. It's fine. It's normal. And ch deliberate changes in the canon. I don't know why I quote. I don't know why I quoted that. That's just the words. There's no reason to put air quotes on that. Deliberate changes in their canon, right? So when I start seeing stuff about like, this is fine. The By the way, the versus wiki stuff or the versus battles dot com uh, wiki or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what they are because I'm, again, not super familiar with them, which is, the, by the way, that's why the authors got all like a little irritated. Because they were like, this, these people who I've never heard of, who <laughs> who engage in a thing that annoys me a lot because people come into chats and people come, people DM me and be like, hey, do you think so-and-so could beat so-and-so? And we're like, there is no canon. And they're like, okay, yeah, but can so-and-so beat so-and-so? And I'm like, you didn't hear me? I just said there is no canon. Okay, yeah, but could so-and-so beat so-and-so? And you're just like, okay, block. Um, these are the people that come to us and they annoy the crap out of us right and so to have have this website be like i think the scp wiki is paying attention to our and it may be true for some authors i don't want to be like flipping about it it absolutely and probably is true for some authors but for them to be like the scp wiki as a whole is uh <laughs> are deliberately creating super powerful entities just to mess with us Makes every SCP out there who isn't doing that go, what are you talking about? Leave us alone. <laughs> oh, but um, I mean, we talk about the SCP wikis canon. We talk about Marvel. We talk about Star Trek, Star Wars. We talk about uh, modern fiction in general. And <sighs> consistency is nice. It's a luxury in the fiction you consume, not a requirement. That's something I say about a lot of things. This is nice to have, but it is not a requirement for that thing to be successful. Okay. And <laughs> power scaling arguments work off of the assumption that fiction is all one thing. It just does. I, I should say, everybody who's ever come to me with a question has treated it as such. So maybe there are more nuanced takes inside that community. Uh, I don't know. but And there have been two other uh, major uh, points of contention in recent years, uh, not recent years, recent days, weeks even, uh, about stuff like this. Uh, Fallout, the Fallout series came out and it had sort of a couple of things that were hard to explain in the, it because it's supposed to be canon to the games, all of the games. Um, well, probably not Brotherhood of Steel. <laughs> There's a third, so the actual third game, this is not important, but so there's Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and then there was Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. Was it Brotherhood of Steel? Anyway, it was sort of a strat half strategy game, half Fallout game. It was really weird. And I don't think it's canonical to the rest of the series. Uh, that was technically Fallout 3, but then actual Fallout 3 came out by Bethesda, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout 76. These are all in the canon of um, 
of Fallout, and then the Fallout TV series is set in the same canon, but it had some history stuff that they included that made people think they were either upending the canon or drastically changing it to fit their own current uh, view in a way that people didn't like, right? But that's just an example of how canon isn't... It, this happens every time. It's like big company or even just regular author changes canon. And instead of saying, wow, this is another example showing me that canon is not that canons of fiction are not concrete. Oh, wow. This is yet another example of that. They say canons are concrete and this is <laughs> and you're fucking it up. You're not allowed to do this. Um, the other great example from modern, uh, not modern, again, I said last couple of days, last three weeks. Um, has been the uh, female custodies thing in Warhammer 40k. Now, I don't, I'm not into Warhammer 40k like a lot. I've read the lore is interesting to me, so I've read a, a, quite a bit of it. But, um, so <laughs> they've changed it. Even well, I think the thing is they're like we don't care that they well, that they do care. We don't care that they've created female custodies. What we care about is is that they're taking a crap on all this extant lore and changing it without you know. Uh, without being able to, I'm like, no, they, they're the guys that are creating the stories. They can create, they can do whatever they want to with it. When Disney bought star Wars, they invalidated the entire back catalog of legends lore and was like, no, nope, none of that exists yet. <laughs> we may bring it back if we like it. And we may leave it on the cutting room floor. If we don't, that's that. Um, and that happens. And that's a, that's the stark contrast version of it. And I don't know if female uh, custodies uh, was a thing in the past, it probably wasn't. And, the, and there's probably plenty of things you could dig up that support the idea that that's just not true. Those things aren't true anymore. Deal with it. That's, it's not just the SC, this, I made a tweet recently because it, it hit me <laughs> that the SCP wiki isn't special. I, I've made this script. I wrote a whole script here. I've not really been referencing it a whole lot. I mean, I, re I have been referencing it as sort of a guideline, but I wrote this whole script about how the SCP wiki is special. And like, as I was creating examples, I went through the Bible, I went through Star Trek, I went through Star Wars. Uh, and then, of course, there was the more recent stuff, Fallout, uh, uh, Warhammer 40K. I started being like, wait, SV Wiki isn't special. I mean, it is special in that its canon is probably looser than any other uh, work of fiction, but it is not exceptionally special because every type of fiction, every television series, every book series... Everything that is fiction that goes on for more than one book, and even in some cases in that one book, sometimes the beginning of a book doesn't match with the end of the book. But anything that goes on for more than one entry is not going to remain 100% consistent between. It just isn't. It's impossible to do from a human standpoint, and also probably not great from a literature, liter uh, yeah, literature or creative standpoint. It, it limits you in ways that you shouldn't necessarily be limited. And limits are sometimes good. They do inspire creativity. And like observing your limits and trying to create within those limits is good. But if they're stopping you from creating something good, they're not useful and you should not worry about them. And that's what most creators have started to do and not just started to do, have always done. Anyway, I've gone on a rant long enough. Um, it was nice talking to you guys again. It's been a few months since I've been able to do a video. You can tell that I've got a new ish setup. Um, I try, I've been trying to create like a better video setup for you guys. Uh, and I'm hoping that you guys like it. I have a big project coming in June. Yeah, it's in June. It should be late June that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. And I got a couple of sponsorship things coming across. this. I want to tell you something, though. So the company is VIPC, and I'll actually have a link in the description. Uh, this is for free because I was so impressed with this. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing an actual sponsored uh, post and a couple other things later. Um, actually, I might the, the referral link might be in this video. Uh, but I'm going to do a more complete review of the actual the actual product, not the extras that they sent me. This is an SCP Foundation Challenge coin. And I'm going to hold on real quick. Hold on. I don't want to. Yeah. Secure, contain, protect. And the back of it is Nine-Tailed Fox. And I love it. <laughs> They also sent me a, uh, along with it, a, what looks like some sort of, 
uh, Sarkic challenge coin. I'm not a huge fan or uh, like super uh, knowledgeable about Sarkic or Church of the Broken God stuff. And I always say those together because they are often together. Uh, but here's that. And I know it's a little misshapen, but considering it's Sarkic in nature, I actually think that might be deliberate. But yeah, there's that side and then there's that side. I love, these are so, and they're heavy too. They're like pretty chunky. Like, hold on. I think you might be able to hear that slap. That's a chunky coin. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a more thorough review of the actual products they sent me instead of the extras, but this is nice. Having an SCP. I like having an SCP Foundation Challenge coin. I'm going to keep this. I'm probably going to keep this in my pocket. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got some stuff coming down the pipe. I will try and get back onto a regular schedule. Um, it's possible I may move down to doing like one or two videos a month, but hopefully longer content. Um, sometimes I do a reading and it feels like I'm just making filler. I don't know how much you guys like it when I do readings on this channel. That's a that's an even better question. Maybe I should just ask you, would you guys like more frequent uh, videos that aren't like involved me talking to the camera? Or would you like me to take longer between videos, but try and do more in-depth reviews and or um, examinations of, uh, of fiction in general? Uh, not just SCP stuff, but just fiction in general. Um, let me know. And with that, we'll go to uh, <laughs> tell you that uh, thank you very much for watching. Let's do the standard outro stuff. I've been wearing my headphones this entire time because it's been three or four months since I started making videos again, or since I last made a video, and I completely forgot that I'm not supposed to be wearing my headphones. So at least these are the headphones that don't have tape on them, so they look decent. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just realized that. Um, thank you very much for watching, though. And... Um, Thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone here. I would love it if you could go to my Patreon. This uh, definitely would help me uh, with regards to making content and pledge at any level. Uh, we have Sinjariki who has pledged at $100, and I sincerely appreciate that. That is uh, def definitely helping keep me afloat right now. It's nice to know that I'm not alone here, and I will see you all again in the next video.